Hello and welcome to Who's Your News Source. I'm Rebecca Brame. And I'm Hillary Simon. As I'm sure you all have seen, dozens of tornadoes ripped through the Midwest over the past few days, devastating many small communities who saw as much as 75% of their cities wiped away by the powerful storms. Yesterday, Who's Your News Source Rebecca reporter Erin Carson went down to Hendonville, Indiana to survey the damage in the hard hit town. She's with us today in the studio to talk about what she saw. I spent the day in Henryville yesterday and the damage was almost unimaginable. The high school was completely destroyed. The middle school had damage, the elementary school. I don't know when the students will be able to go back to school. And some of the buses were destroyed because when the tornado happened, it was actually midday when you know kids were getting out of school. So that was a big issue. But to see the community rally around each other was really great. And um, they had a lot of people helping and things like that. And there was such a positive feeling in, in the town, uh, people helping each other. And even though some of their houses were destroyed, they said they were thankful to have their lives and they just wanted to help other people who maybe had it worse. So that was great to see. And I spoke to a lady who her home was destroyed. She had lived there for years and she was just happy that she had her life and she wanted to see what she could do to help other people. And here's what she had to say about the, about the damage. I'm so lucky because look around our community. Some people's houses are totally flattened. Um, one of my friends lost absolutely everything. She didn't have the chance to get anything out. My house was a house of hope, you know. We hear about people saying, oh, I'm so blessed by God, but until you go through something, then you realize how really blessed you are. And, and I am very blessed. Like I said, you, it's great to just see that people were so positive and upbeat after such a horrible thing and, and the small town coming together, it was, it was just great. Absolutely. Now, was it one tornado or many tornadoes that hit? It was actually one tornado that went through Henryville, but it was part of larger cells. There were two supercells that broke off and tornadoes, the tornadoes that hit uh, came from that. And this one was, you know, very bad, but some of them were, were not as bad, but they were all part of that large cell that came through. Now, what was the community's response to the tornado? Again, the community response was great to see people come together. The tornado happened at around 2 o'clock Friday, and by the time I was there uh, Saturday morning, they already had a lot of supplies set up. People were giving away toiletries. Um, there was someone that owns a funeral home, and they had coffee and a warm place to, for people to stay, and they were giving out bottled water. And one lady was even give, giving away pies out of the back of her truck, you know, just to make it easier for the people that had lost a lot. Absolutely. Well, thanks for sharing your story, Erin. It was great to have you in the studio thanks today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Tonight at Assembly Hall is the IU Men's Basketball Senior Night. The group will take on rival Purdue at 7 p.m. IU already has a spot in the NCAA tournament, but tonight's game is special for both IU basketball seniors and for the Hoosier Boilermaker rivalry. Tonight is the last home game for seniors, and IU fans will be cheering for a win at Assembly Hall. Expressing one's thoughts via Twitter is becoming more common than ever. However, lately appears to be popping up in some rather unusual places. Who's your news sources? Kylie Works has the story. We live in a day and age where everyone is constantly on their phones, whether they're texting or on Facebook or tweeting. It's completely normal to see someone with their head down and cell phone out. But is this appropriate in church? Sherwood Oaks Christian Church started their Twitter account three years ago. Yeah, well, um, you know, social media is just such a force uh, nowadays anyways, and the church is really kind of picking up on that. And so we just wanted to stay up with the trends. Um, so we, we, that's why we created the account, and then it just kind of keeps getting bigger and bigger. And so we decided we would um, try to utilize it and see how we could engage um, our congregation with it. More and more churches are starting to incorporate Twitter during their services as a way to connect their sermon with the congregation and help the members connect amongst each other. Depending on my responsibilities uh, on the given Sunday, I try to tweet a, once, a live tweet one service every Sunday, and that just kind of involves me tweeting quotes out from the sermon or asking, throwing out a question. And I have a hashtag for every sermon series that we do so that they kind of all, people can find them, and if they want to respond, they can use the hashtag. So. Sherwood Oaks Christian Church isn't the only unlikely environment using Twitter. The IU Opera has also began incorporating tweeting in their shows in order for viewers to share experiences. We are encouraging um, members of the audience that have a Twitter account or don't to 
possibly get one and tweet about how they are um, excited before the opera, what they are have already seen or are looking forward to during intermission, and then a great overview of what they were able to experience after. Brooks says that Twitter is a great way for opera lovers to connect with one another in a casual environment. Um, it's a great way to just get another connection out there um, between people that necessarily want to critique but don't know how to critique or at the same time want to celebrate what they're seeing but don't know how. For Hoosier News Source, I'm Kylie Works. Thanks, Kylie. IU students waited the auditorium Friday for tickets to Grammy winner John Mayer's Little 500 concert. Due to high demand, the auditorium allowed no more than four people to purchase tickets under one card. Around 300 groups waited the, at the auditorium at 10 p.m. Friday to receive the student discount. To hand out tickets, the lottery number distribution policy, which increases sales efficiency, was used. The concert will be held Monday, April 9th at 7.30 p.m. IU Communications launched a new campaign with Street Smart to encourage students to make intelligent decisions while having fun. The campaign includes a catchy way to gain student interest. Who's your news source's Kelsey Carlisle has the story. Student interns along with the IU Communications Department have brainstormed numerous ways to get students' attention about the importance of safety. So the team came up with this. You guys have a good time tonight? Why is Frank in a tree? I'm naked. You guys are wasted. Fred, help me take him home. The animals consist of four main characters who constantly tell stories through Twitter and Facebook. They tweet as if they are students. They have lives. They go to basketball games. Um, they go out um, at night. Um, and they face a lot of the same challenges and issues that students do. Student interns played a big role in the development of the party animals. A lot of the other um, street smart campaigns that they started um, last semester, really what they weren't hitting with students and students weren't really connecting with them. Um, and those ones were done a lot by the uh, full-time staff at Creative Services and IU Communications. So they brought us interns in to kind of get a student voice and get the students involved in actual campaign. I think the biggest challenge was creating something that students would identify with and also like respond well to. Um, and so that's what kind of um, inspired the whole like plastic animal thing. You can follow the party animals at Street Smart IU. Reporting from IUS TV, I'm Kelsey Carlisle. The Indiana House of Representatives unanimously voted on February 14th to approve the Lifeline Bill. The bill's passage would prevent the prosecution of students who call for emergency assistance relating to alcohol poisoning. The bill is expected to go back to the Senate for a new vote due to minor amendments made in the House. The Lifeline Bill will affect IU students as well as the whole state of Indiana. For more information on the legislation, visit indianalifeline.org. Remember to check out our news department's Twitter feed. This will give you the opportunity to follow up with stories you see on the show and get more information about IU and who's your news source. You can read up-to-date news about campus, Indiana, and more. Follow us at Hoosier NW Source. Well, that's all we have for you this week on Hoosier News Source. Check back with us after spring break for a look into increasing drug problems in Bloomington and Monroe County. And for more national and entertainment news, check out What's Up Weekly with hosts Margot Andrews and Brittany Bradley. See you next week.